The conference has been muted. Okay, good morning and good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, just welcome to our Connecting the Dots webinar for today, where we're going to be discussing the ideal cracking test. And Dr. Fuji Zhou is with us today. Before we begin the webinar, I just have a few housekeeping items that I wanted to address. If you'll just noticed, I put everyone on the call on mute. That's just for out of respect for all participants so we don't have any background noise and we can make sure that we hear our speaker clearly uh, because he will actually have a video component that will be part of the presentation slides today, which is um, a fun first for us on these webinars. With regards to question and answer, we will leave the Q&A for the end um, as I let Dr. Zhou go through his presentation in sections. But if and when you do have questions throughout the presentation, I will be collecting those and ordering them so that we can respond to them at the end. You'll notice that there is a question and answer participant feedback area in the lower left-hand side of your screen. Uh, I will be moderating those questions for Fuji, and so encourage you to type those there. We usually have a pretty lively Q&A, so I encourage you to, to ask your questions and they will be answered. Also at the end of the presentation, those uh, who have participated and been on the call with us today will receive a certificate for professional development hours, and uh, we will be sure to follow up with each of you and get those to you individually for your participation. So without any further ado, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Fuji. He's a research engineer at the Texas A&M Transportation Institute, where he's been involved with pavement research and lab testing for about 18 years. He is currently leading the NCHRP IDEA 195 to develop an ideal cracking test for asphalt mix design, quality control, and quality assurance. He's an active member of ASTM and the Association of Asphalt Paving Technologies, and he's been winning industry research design awards pretty consistently since about 2004. I've had the unique opportunity to learn from many of our team members that many state agencies and contractors have been requesting the type of work Dr. Joe is dedicating himself to, and there's a great deal of momentum with regard to this ideal cracking test, simply because it's accurate and doesn't have much variability, and it's also quite easy to run. So um, I'm going to, without further ado, excuse me, without further ado, introduce Dr. Joe now. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, uh, everyone, for your time to uh, give me this opportunity to uh, 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 communicate with you what we're doing at uh, TTI, uh, Texas A&M Transportation Institute. Uh, the title for this presentation, as you can see, is Ideal Cracking Test, the Development, Validation, Criteria, and also Application. That's the several things that we're going to talk about today. This is the outline for this presentation. First of all, we introduction, a uh, very brief introduction, why we do this test, uh, why we do that, and also, as I mentioned, the development. We talk about the concept, the sensitivity, and the repeatability of this ideal cracking test. Then we talk about, you know, the validation. We, any test, we must be validated, otherwise we cannot use. So this is the third thing, the validation. They also in order to for in order to be used for QCQA is for mix design, we must have uh, criteria acceptable acceptable criteria for cracking tests. So that's is uh, number four we're going to talk about. Number five, talking about applications. Uh, finally, give a very brief summary and conclusion. So why why we you know uh, for the cracking test? So why we need a cracking test? Basically, the cracking is a major concern for the whole nation. And uh, as we are using uh, more and more recycled materials, and also at the same time, our binder modification, not just for mix, binder modification itself, and we are using the PG system. We don't know what uh, has been in the binder, been added to the binder. So in the last several years, and the REAV is one of them, but we, we for sure, the more things is uh, uh, is coming because our binder industry is very innovative. Uh, all kinds of inventions have been going on with binders. So 
So we we know we are using RAMP and some states using singles. So uh, this situation, our volumetric design alone is not enough to uh, consider all kinds of you know additives, recycled materials. So we do need a cracking test. On the several years ago, uh, we did uh, the NCHRP957. Under that project, we uh, selected the seven cracking tests. As you can see, there are seven, um, uh, seven pictures here. The three SCB tests, one DCT test, one bending beam fatigue test, and the one overlay tester, and the one IDT test. So all these seven tests, the one thing uh, is, uh, is that and uh, it's overall it's not simple enough, especially for sample preparation. All these tests need to be cut and or cold. So it's very you know when we're using a cracking test for QC QA, uh, we want to be uh, very simple and quick. So that's what I'm saying. We need uh, uh, to develop a simple and performance related and also repeatable, reliable cracking test. That's how this uh, why we started this ideal cracking test and also this uh, project with NCHRP IDEA. There are several things we want, uh, when we develop the idea, uh, ideal cracking test, we uh, set up seven criteria. The number one is uh, simplicity. We want uh, the, the new test uh, or ideal test, we can call it, as no instrumentation, no cutting, no gluing, no drilled holes or, or coring, or no notching, so just uh, Mold the specimen and test it. And the practicality, we want you know the minimum training for technicians or operators. Uh, just uh, very minimum training uh, for this test for operation. And also efficient. Uh, we want tests to be fast. Uh, can be complete within one minute. The test equipment. We also set a limit. Set our criteria is uh, the the cost for test equipment. Either use existing test equipment. Or if you want to buy a brand new uh, test machine, around you know ten thousand dollars or less. In terms of repeatability, we want the coefficient variation less than twenty percent. And in terms of sensitivity, and uh, must sensitive to as for the mix characteristics, as for binder content, binder type, and ramp RAS, and additives, aggregates, and another one is aging because we all know cracking properties is related to aging, how long we cook in the binder or the mix in the oven. So that's another thing, very important, sensitivity. Uh, otherwise, we cannot use for mix design or QCQA. The last one, and not least, actually very important, is must have good correlation with field performance. So if we any test meets these seven criteria, we can call you know an ideal cracking test. So again, under this uh, NCHRP uh, IDEA project 195, uh, we developed this test. I want to show you a very one minute video to have you have a concept, have an idea which type of testing and uh, we, are, we are talking about. So the next one is a one minute video. Let's uh, look at the video first. Recently, the Texas A&M Transportation Institute, or TTI, developed an indirect tension asphalt cracking test, known as IDEAL-CT, under NCHRP IDEA Project 195. First, three to five cylindrical specimens, 155 millimeters in diameter and 62 millimeters in height, are molded in a superpaved gyratory compactor with target air voids of 7% plus or minus 0.5%. Then, then specimens are conditioned for a certain time, for example, two hours, at a testing temperature such as 25 degrees Celsius. To run the test, enter necessary specimen information, place and align the specimen in the loading frame. Then, load the specimen at a constant deformation rate of 50 millimeters per minute until fracture failure occurs. There is, there is no, no need, need for, for instrumentation, instrumentation gluing, gluing, cutting, cutting notching, notching, coring, or, or any, any other preparation. So that's the test that we are talking about. You can see it's so simple, just mold specimen and test it you know, very quickly, then you get the result. 
So in terms of the, you know, the, the ideal CT concept, uh, which parameter from this test we are using to characterize cracking resistance? So we call CT index. You can see the equation here. And also, basically, if you look at this equation, there are three major components. Uh, the GF, that's the fracture energy. And the M75, that's the post-peak slope at the 75% uh, uh, maximum load. You, you, you can see uh, this, uh, this point. And the L75, that's the displacement, uh, the post-peak displacement at 75% maximum load. And the D, that's the diameter specimen, that's the constant number. So that's what I'm saying, you know, the CT index consider the fracture energy, uh, the post-peak slope, and also the displacement at 75% uh, maximum load at the post-peak. We all know uh, any uh, uh, internal fracture uh, mechanics point view, the higher fracture energy, uh, we're getting better cracking resistance. That's why the GF is on the top. And uh, at the bottom, we see the, the M75, that's the post-peak slope. You can see that's mean, you know, the post-peak slope really tell you how fast, how slow the cracking uh, propagates. So we're considering cracking propagation. The larger the number, the M75, that's mean you load the reduction very quickly. That's due to the crack propagates very fast. So the larger the M75 uh, actually is the worse the cracking resistance. That's why we put it at the, you know, uh, at the bottom. And the L75, that's the 75% maximum load. You still can hold, uh, you know, the, 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 the tolerance of the displacement Apparently, the larger that's the number, the better. That's why we put it on the top. And the D, that's the diameter. So that's how the CT index we calculated. And apparently, the larger the, uh, the CT index, the better cracking resistance. So in the next step, uh, what we did, we did the sensitivity analysis. We have uh, five mixes here. Uh, the, the, the control mix is a virgin mix, is a PG76-22. Uh, with uh, uh, three eight uh, uh, super pale mix, the optimum as for the content is five percent. Then we uh, vary the mix. We keep the total as for the content the same, but we added the wrap twenty percent wrap. Again, we use the six formula twenty two. Then the next mix, we uh, change the gradation again. We consider we include the fifteen percent wrap with the five percent singles. Again, with the version 6 form 22, the number 4 mix is 20% wrap, but uh, uh, we, this time we keep the total binder content the same, but we change the 6 form 28, and the number 5, we uh, uh, switch the binder, version binder, 6 form 34. So, but all this uh, five mixes, so we try our best to keep the asphalt gradation as close as possible. You can see this graph. So basically, all these uh, five mixes, is the total as for the content is the same, 5.0. The gradation is, uh, is uh, uh, very, uh, very close to each other. And uh, the changing, you know, is uh, either we change the bind, uh, the virgin binder type, or we change, we're using wrap or rest. So this slide shows the CT index, the test result. Uh, you clearly you can see we uh, the virgin uh, virgin mix uh, the CT index is around one uh, 175. Then we add the 20 percent wrap is below 50, and again we uh, use the 15 percent wrap, 5 percent shingles, reduce again as well. So we clearly to see the this test ideal cracking test or CT index is sensitive to the ramp and rest. We add the very stiff materials. And uh, for this case, uh, we got uh, less cracking resistance mix. And uh, this one is a sensitivity to the binder type. Again, this is a 20% wrap. All three mixes uh, have 20% wrap. The total as for the content is 5%. We, uh, the only difference with these three mixes is a virgin binder type. We uh, switch to, if you look at all three binders, the, the high temperature PG are same, all are 6.4, uh, 
the only trend, the only thing we're trending is minus uh, the lower PG end, the lower lower temperature PG is minus 22, and the minus 28, minus 34. As we expected, we're using uh, 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 polymer mod modified binders, and uh, the, min the minus end, we're getting softer, and we get much better cracking resistance. And uh, we increase, you know, around uh, uh, 40, 42 or 40, 43, around that number, increase to uh, uh, 125 when we change to 6434. So that's how uh, uh, a soft binder can improve uh, cracking resistance. Uh, this slide shows uh, sensitivity to the asphalt content. The middle one, you already saw that. That's the optimum asphalt content. That's 5%. Then we uh, minus 0 0.5. That's uh, become 4.5. And the right side one, that's the 5.5. And you increase asphalt content. Apparently, you increase uh, the cracking resistance, as uh, we see in this test. Uh, this one is sensitive to the aging condition, and uh, we we use the plant mix. So this mix is uh, not the water mix as we showed the previous file mixes. This one is a plant mix used in the field of the test section. It's a virgin mix with uh, PG 70 22. The optimum asphalt content is 6.3, so it's have uh, have very good uh, crack resistance. The CT index is beyond 350. Uh, we aged four hours in the lab, in the oven. That's the 370 uh, around. Uh, when we aged 12 hours, uh, you can see the cracking resistance reduced. The CT index becomes 280. And uh, when we cook that mix in the oven for 24 hours, it's significantly reduced to uh, around 70. So you can see, start from uh, four hours aging in the oven, is 370 uh, uh, reduced to after 24 hours aging, we only get 70. So 300 uh, difference. So you can clearly see that's why our mixes uh, uh, in the le put in in the field. The longer you put, the less cracking resistance. So this is the sensitivity analysis part. Uh, this slide shows us uh, in terms of the repeatability. And uh, overall, our goal is 20% with three replica specimens. If you look at all the COAs, and uh, we have uh, two uh, mixes uh, with 23.5, but most of it is 20 or less. And this data this is the first, uh, is two years ago, this is the data point. Right now, we got a better equipment, and our numbers uh, become much better. But even then, and uh, this, uh, most of the mixes is, is 20 or less. So we think we are, we are pretty good with the uh, test result. And uh, let's move on to uh, so field validation, uh, the ideal cracking test. What we did, the first step, we, uh, we uh, correlate this test with already established the cracking test. Like in Texas, we use overlay tester. We have some comparison with this test with the overlay tester. In Illinois, they have what they call flexible flexibility index test, or that's the kind of SCB test. Uh, the another one, we, what we compared with uh, Minnesota DCT, DCT test. In Minnesota, they're using DCT for characterize low temperature cracking. So we have this co uh, uh, comparison as well. In terms of the field uh, comparison, with uh, you know the, that's the most important thing. Uh, regardless, it must be correlated with the field cracking performance. So I have a FHWA alpha test results. We also have Texas field test sections. We also the recently we got RTPP, SPS 10. They have a six test section in Oklahoma. It's as for the overlay with the wall mix. So we're not just talking about hot mix. We also talk about wall mix as well. So let's uh, go uh, look at one by one. You can see the the left up corner. That's the ideal CT versus the overlay tester. In that graph, the x-axis is OT cycles. The y-axis is CT index. And clearly, they have very good uh, correlation. This is the uh, 17 mixes over there. And uh, I only show the with the correlation with OT cycles. 
We're also sure we have the, the correlation with uh, the latest text dots, uh, uh, new uh, cracking parameter, they call crack progress, uh, progression rate. Uh, we have same, you know, a very good uh, correlation as well. Uh, I didn't show here because it's too crowded to show too many graphs. Uh, but if you're interested, send me a, shoot me an email. I can send you the result. Or you can talk to TechStart, and they have this information as well. And the right uh, side, uh, lower corner, that's the IDUCT versus the IFIT, uh, the Illinois Flexible Flexibility Index test. Uh, with that test, we only have five points, and uh, you can see very good correlation as well. And not just the TTI, that's all the data I present, that's our data. I also uh, got uh, uh, from uh, a website, the NCAT Test Track Conference, uh, NCAT Adam Taylor, he made a presentation. He did uh, their test, this is their test results, and he showed a good, very good correlation between IFIT, ideal CT, and the OT test result. If you look at, you know, even with the uh, OT NCAT test result, the correlation between among this test is, I would say, you know, point, point 0.9, and uh, even the ideal CT w with uh, OT Texas, you see their test results are point, point 0.98, and the IFIT with ideal CT, uh, the correlation is point 0.9, and uh, so I would say, you know, verified by third party is not just the, uh, my result. And this result we recently uh, finished a, a complete between ideal CT and the DCT. And uh, you see with, uh, I would say this uh, 15, this 12 mixes, and the correlation is R squared is 0.8. And uh, this report has been published so it's not just with uh, uh, mid intermediate temperature test results has a good correlation. It also has a good correlation with low temperature DCT test results. Uh, one thing I would mention, the DCT uh, test was performed at minus 12 degrees Celsius. The ideal CT is uh, at room temperature 77 uh, degree Fahrenheit. So even, you know, has very good correlation with uh, DCT at low temperature. So with that, that's the correlation with the uh, established lab uh, cracking test. And the next one, I'm going to show the field uh, correlation with uh, the FHWA. They have the accelerated loading facility at uh, Turner Fairback. They have uh, uh, 10 test sections over there. And uh, you see the X axis is ideal CT, that's CT index number. The Y axis is the number of passes to see the first crack show on the surface. They have, uh, uh, this is a four inch acid mix with 12 inch granular base and the subgrade. This is a, uh, clearly the, you know, uh, traditional fatigue cracking. You can see it has a, you know, a very good correlation with the test result. Second one, this is a Texas field test sections with the refreshing cracking. And on the US 62, we have uh, two sections over there. The blue line, that's a uh, virgin mix, and the right line, that was the uh, rampant rats. You can see with, uh, uh, you know, two and a half year, we, we saw the virgin mix has a uh, uh, refraction cracking lens is around, you know, 400 feet, but in terms of the rats, rats test section is doubled. And the right side, you can see the, the ideal cracking test result, the CT index for the rampant rats around 60, the word mix we got uh, 180. So again, you know, the higher CT index, you get uh, less cracking in the field. This one, this is the latest result we got from uh, uh, SPS 10 in Oklahoma test section. It's two inch overlay, six test sessions over there built uh, in uh, November 2016, I'm sorry, it's 2016. So, uh, I'm sorry, it should be 2000, if I'm not wrong, it's, that's right, November 2015. And after, you know, 30 months and two and a half years, uh, on the May 16, we went there, did a survey. You clearly to see the 10 sections over here and uh, uh, the higher CT index 
and the less cracking resistance at the same time, you can see the things less than 50 CT index, you got, you know, 20% refreshing cracking. And uh, the one of them is already 100% refractive. That's the CT index value is uh, 30, 34, something like that. So apparently, if you want your mix uh, has uh, less refreshing cracking, I would, you know, at least above 50. That's that's for uh, for this case study. So with that, uh, I'm, you know, already showed the field validation is sensitive to uh, all the uh, mix as for the mix uh, characteristics. It is also repeatable and it still has a good correlation with uh, existing established cracking test, uh, Texas overrate tester, uh, high fit, and the DCT, and also has very good correlation with the field performance from the FHWA uh, alpha cracking test. Uh, Texas filter test section and the RTPP SPS, SPS 10 filter test sections. So with that, this you know uh, good correlation. The next step well, we're trying to establish the criteria. Again, I'm showing here uh, this is 17 Texas mixes, including dense graded mixes, silver pale SS, SSMA, and wrapper S mixes, and some mix with rejuvenators as well. Yeah, you can see, uh, again, I show this the correlation. Oh, yeah, here is the uh, first of all is OT cycles versus the, the new Texas uh, crack propagation rate, the new criteria. You can see this two has very good correlation. And again, uh, the, the right side one, that's the CT index uh, versus the crack pro, uh, progression rate. The correlation R square is 9.0. So again, you know, the, the ideal CT, uh, CT index has a good correlation with uh, the traditional OT cycles. So also has a very good correlation with the new crack progression rate criteria. So based on this correlation, I proposed some uh, preliminary uh, CT index criteria for TechStart and uh, other DOTs uh, can based on uh, this information to choose their numbers. Uh, surely you have to validate with your uh, state, uh, payment condition, and the traffic. They all have influence on the uh, criteria. Basically, what we base on, you know, the, the numbers we base on historical OT cycles in text art in the, in the history and the spec numbers, they have OT cycles requirement. For example, they have SMA around 200 cycles. For the town, we have 300 cycles for the, the cam. Uh, that's a crack attenuation mix. That's a very good uh, uh, cracking resistance mix. It's 750. So we just recommend the several numbers. Uh, again, this is a recommendation for density graded. We just say maybe minimum is 65 uh, CT index for the super pay 105. So SMA 145 and the town mix 185 and cam. 320. One thing I want to, uh, you know, clarify, this is the recommendation. This is not Texas spec yet. So just this from a research recommendation. But meanwhile, I just uh, list another uh, uh, recommend the numbers for Virginia DOT and they have, they did their lots of work in Virginia independently. It's not my work. And they are thinking using the CT index with 70. And another thing I want to say, you know, this, uh, the numbers we proposed with this uh, table is uh, pretty uh, close to what uh, uh, what the what uh, uh, Tom Dr. Tom Benner did in uh, for New Jersey DOT. He published a paper in uh, TRB 2018, and uh, he recommends similar numbers for CT index for New Jersey. So again, you know, we have this. Uh, uh, numbers and we want to put the numbers with uh, reality again. I'm going to show in this uh, uh, This slide again. I'm, I'm you know, if we put 70 here or 65 you can see you know this uh, give a reasonable numbers and uh, we see the refreshing cracking rate with two inch and Overlay and if you put uh, 70 uh, 65 I would say less than 10% 
So that's in Oklahoma. Again, you know, this uh, traffic is not heavy, but they do have lots of truck over there. Uh, so that's uh, give us, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of confidence for the, the numbers we are proposing. But again, the numbers should be adjusted based on the traffic, based on climate, and uh, based on your state specific payment condition. Then we talk about application. Uh, we, uh, you know, in order to facilitate to uh, for implementation, uh, we talk about uh, we have a video. We uh, we talk about uh, test equipment, test procedure, uh, the use for QC and the mix design. And let's quickly go through this. If we go to YouTube, we are, we are, we have a developed a two minutes YouTube video. Actually, you saw most of the part are in the beginning of this presentation uh, about this test. Uh, you, if you are interested, you can go to YouTube. And you can search ideal CT, you will find this video. And in terms of test equipment, uh, I, we, uh, I worked with three manufacturers, uh, test equipment manufacturer, test equip, test equip, uh, interest tech, and the USA controls group. They, they all have their standalone test equipment. And this one will also have the text fixture. You can see the small part over there in the middle of the, the uh, this slide. And uh, so all this uh, test equipment is ready uh, for, uh, for 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 purchasing. And uh, I'm not, you know, I want to clarify, I'm not associated with any test equipment manufacturer. And I just uh, during the idea project, I was request to work with the manufacturer to uh, uh, get the test equipment ready. So that's what I did following the NCHRP uh, guidelines and requirements. And uh, so this, I would say the test equipment is ready. And we do have a, a ASTM standard. It's not official yet. Uh, actually, you're going to run through several um, several rounds uh, uh, ballot, uh, balloting. It's very close to the uh, to the final uh, finish line. And hopefully at the end of uh, uh, January, we're going to have this procedure officially available for everyone. But if you're interested, and send me an email, I can send you the draft. In terms of you know uh, application, uh, I think it's the best for the QC QA. You can see you know I think uh, uh, DOT people and uh, contractors has uh, clearly know where you know the plant most of the time in the remotest areas, and uh, probably you know <laughs> I have, I work with uh, Texas uh, DOT in the build test sections in uh, lots of. Uh, also nowhere, to be honest, in te West Texas, there's no way, you know, for them to cutting and to coring the things for QC uh, in the QC lab. And uh, another thing is we don't have time to to call and cut and waste the sample dry to mesh the air void. So this is uh, the simplest cracking test ever for the ideal CT. Just mold it and test it and get your get your number and have the uh, have the uh, during the production, there's no notice uh, for the. Also, for the, you can you know consider uh, volumetric requirement, the writing requirement, Hamburg, APA or flow number for the cracking test. I recommend using ideal CT, but uh, it's it really is your call. You can use other uh, cracking tests available as well. I fit LCB and overly tester or any other type of you know DCT, whatever you want to use, and also in terms of balance. A mix design, you need to also consider moisture damage as well. And to quickly sum it up, some make summary here. Ideal CT have seven features: in the simple, and practical, repeatable, reliable, and sensitive to uh, as for the mix mix uh, characteristics, and have good correlation with the field performance. Was validated with the field cracking data and ready for implementation. And uh, again, the ideal CT is not perfect. And I would clarify that. And it is, uh, has an uh, air void or has the influence on test results. If you're testing your mix uh, with 7%, another one with 9%, uh, or you know beyond 7.5, you may not be comparable. And uh, alternatively, uh, alternative saying is, you uh, may not, you cannot use this to compare your PFC or OGFC mixes uh, with your density gradient. And uh, so. You have to compare apple with apple. Uh, the air voids uh, we recommend is seven seven percent plus minus 0.5 percent. So.
So beyond that, I would say uh, don't compare. Uh, with that, I thank you for your attention. I uh, would like to take any uh, questions you may have. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you, Fuji. We do have uh, quite a few questions that have come in, so I'm going to sort of ask these and have you address them hopefully one by one. So we're going to start as they came in. Uh, the first question is, how many test replications are there in determining COV results? For the results, uh, I show this uh, in this presentation is three replicas. But okay. surely you can, you know, test. Uh, you want to improve the repeatability. You can test the file. Since this test, uh, there are no requirements for cutting and uh, notching anything. No, nothing. Just mode files, replicas, specimen. It's pretty easy, and you can test the file. Perfect. And it says. It looks like the acceptable CT index is around 100 based on comparisons to iFit and the overlay tester. Is that correct? Uh, that's uh, in terms of, you know, compare it with the overlay tester, and it really depends on uh, the, uh, the requirement for your OT. In Texas, we, we have different uh, requirements for different type of mixes, so it's really up to uh, the DOT people to set up the criteria, and uh, and also for different type of mixes, and also I would say for different uh, environments as well. And uh, apparently, if you in the cold area, you don't want to set in, uh, your number uh, with 100. You may need 150. So that's that, that's that's all I can say. Okay, perfect. Um, the next question is: Were the ALF comparisons using cores or plugs? The A I L, A L F yes, the ALF. The ALF we got the plant mix. We uh, we reheat the mix four hours in the oven. Uh, that's before compaction. Then we uh, compact it. Uh, then we test it. It's okay. not field core. What are the next question is? What are the air voids supposed to be? Seven percent or four percent? Uh, we uh, uh, for all our test results is seven percent, but you can run whatever you want. You feel comfortable to run. If you run four percent, you must be consistent all four percent, four percent plus minus point five. If you use seven percent, just use seven percent all straight, seven percent plus minus point five percent. I'm saying don't compare four percent versus seven percent. Okay, fantastic. Um, the next question is regarding temperatures. It asks if there are any thoughts about testing at different temperatures for different regions. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, it uh, really depends on, on what uh, you're trying to do, what you're trying to do. If you use only for your QC QA, I would say you don't need to run different temperatures. Just run at the room temperature and uh, get your number and uh, before the production, and then you run it uh, during the production. But for the mix design point of view, you can run, you know, at the north, north uh, regions. I would say, you know, sure, you can uh, run it at the lower temperature, a little bit lower temperature for your region. That's no problem. Uh, at the same time, you know, you can see the result I showed that had to, at least the 12 mixes we test has a pretty good correlation with DCT at a very low temperature, minus 12 degrees C. So you may not need to be run at low temperature, but uh, it's really your choice. Your choice was uh, the okay. best for your for for your DOT. Super. Uh, next question asks: What thickness requirement is the ideal CT? Does there always have to be a six-inch diameter pill, or can a Marshall pill be used as well? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Uh, actually, you know, uh, to be honest, I haven't tested any Marshall pills yet, uh, but you surely can do it. That's no problem because this test is, uh, the test itself is nothing new. It's uh, exactly the same as uh, uh, IDT test and our IDT strength test. And uh, what we, only thing we, we, we did is uh, uh, develop a new uh, data analysis uh, 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 approach and uh, then also came up with the uh, the parameter, the CT index parameter. You can run any size of specimen, 
But uh, one thing I would say, uh, the different size of specimen may not be comparable. Uh, before you use a small specimen, you may either establish, uh, establish a correlation between a small specimen and larger specimen, or you establish uh, specific criteria for your small specimen. Okay. This is a, another follow-up, I believe, to the percentage air void question. It asks, were you able to define the specific value impact for exceeding the 0.5%? Uh, I, I did some for some uh, several uh, mixes, but uh, not. We haven't uh, do much work. Uh, we haven't done much work uh, in terms of in terms of uh, uh, universal uh, air void correction uh, uh, correction factor yet. Uh, I know you increase the air void, uh, you're getting higher CT index numbers, and uh, this is this is one of the issue. And the one thing I would like to say is not just for the CT index, this test. It's also for uh, other type of this. I would say, you know, watch any displacement control test. Uh, I know IFIT has exactly the same issue. The higher air void, you get higher flexible flexibility index numbers. And uh, it may be overly tested. And I had some data back, you know, 15 years ago. When I did uh, when I first work on worked on the overlay tester, and the higher air world gave me higher number cycles. I also, uh, you know, uh, did uh, some literature search. Even I found some results, uh, some tests. Uh, the SVECD test is not sensitive to air world either. So I would say the air world's impact on the cracking is a big issue. It's not just for this test. We should, uh, you know, investigate more in this area. But uh, simply put, for uh, I haven't done much work in this area yet, but it's worth uh, worth uh, investigating. Fantastic. So, uh, Fuji, there was a previous question where it had asked. It was a two-part question, and we answered the second part. But let's just go back to really quickly if there's a, an answer to what thickness requirement is the ideal cracking test. Oh, you can run right now. We're saying you can run uh, specimen. We, you know, uh, we recommend the standard specimen is 62 millimeters, and plus minus two or one millimeter. That's fine. And uh, the reason why we recommend that size is a close two and a half. And the main reason is, uh, it's lots of people using Hamburg test, uh, Hamburg wave tracking test for rotting and moisture damage, and uh, that's exactly the same size. Uh, or a Hamburg specimen. So that's the reason we choose 62 millimeter. But uh, you can use specimen uh, from inch and a half, 38 uh, millimeter to three and a half, 95 millimeter thick specimen. But you have to uh, uh, make a correction, thickness correction divided by 62, and then you, uh, you know, standardize or normalize to 62 millimeter for comparison purpose. But you can run tests. At, uh, I'm talking about everything we're talking about here is a 150 millimeter diameter specimen for smaller specimens, uh, like a martial specimen and uh, four inch diameters. You may use a thinner specimen, but uh, I have no experience with uh, a four inch diameter specimen. So everything I'm talking about here is a six inch or 150 millimeter super pale gyrator compactor specimen. Okay, thank you. This is a particular question about the difficulty of for a mixed design technician computing the index value from an XY strip recorder printout. So the question is, do you need to purchase additional software, or can you accurately measure using an older pine strip recorder with the paper printouts? Well, that's a good question. I think, uh, actually, uh, the, um, I mentioned Dr. Uh, Tom Bennett. In New Jersey, he used the old uh, pine press, I guess. He said Marshall press with uh, paper and pencil, and he got it. And you don't need uh, uh, any special software. Uh, shoot me an email. I can send you the template, uh, Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheet template. You can process the data. Okay, fantastic. We'll be sure to pass along your information to participants uh, as soon as we're finished with the call. 
Uh, this is a particular question from um, someone, I believe, in, in the southeast asking, what are the um, – will dry or wet conditioning yield different results? Uh, that's a question, a great question. We haven't done uh, that part yet, but uh, it's on the way. And currently, we are doing a national NCHRP 957A project. We are evaluating, you know, actually eight cracking tests, uh, nine total nine cracking tests. And uh, ideal CT is one of them. One uh, one uh, uh, factor we are evaluating is uh, is water bath conditioning and all. Uh, uh, the the uh, temperature oven conditioning, temperature chamber conditioning. So we're going to have the result soon. Hopefully uh, early for next year, uh, we're going to have the result, and uh, we're going to know uh, how long if we use a uh, dry spe uh, wet specimen in the water bath, how long should we put in the water bath, and uh, and can we directly use wet specimens? But for time being, uh, I, I I don't have experience, but uh, it's coming soon. So from what you've discussed, Fuji, is it appropriate to assume that um, you would propose to implement this test in a specification just design only or field uh, QC or both? Uh, both. Both, okay. So we have one more question uh, here in the chat portion. It asks, did you perform any tests with the specimens at the actual in place air voids of the plant mix. The plant mix. The plant mix, we got the plant mix, we uh, reheat it in the lab, we compact to 7% air void. Okay. Can I answer the question? I believe so. Um, oh, I think uh, I think this uh, Matt is asking about. Uh, oh, okay. Actually Maybe they're the referring core, to the cores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the field core, and we haven't tested the field core much field core yet. And uh, but if the field core is uh, before you testing, uh, we recommend using uh, measure the air void, so you know the air void. That's very important. As I mentioned several times, mm -hmm. uh, the CT index is sensitive to the air void. A higher air void, you get a higher number, and uh, so. Okay. Perfect. Do we have any other questions as we uh, work to finish up our call with Fuji today? If we do, we'll give you just a few minutes to submit them in the chat portion of the box. Otherwise, we've received some wonderful uh, questions here, also some feedback that we'll provide to Fuji as well. So I'll give you just a minute to ask a few more questions, and otherwise we'll we'll wrap up. You're receiving a lot of uh, kudos for the presentation, Fuji. Um, just a note to all the participants, this is by far the most incredible partition, participation that we've had. There have been over 100 of you on the call, and not only just during the presentation, but consistently throughout the Q&A, which is incredible. Um, so we very much appreciate your participation and, and really hope to continue to provide topics in the future that are as popular as this one. Maybe we should just invite Fuji back for continued <laughs> continued presentations. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, it doesn't look like we have any further questions. So for those of you still on the call, I'll just wrap up and let you know at the end of uh, by the end of this week you will receive uh, the presentation uh, further contact information for Fuji if there's any other questions that you have for him you'll also re uh, receive a certificate for your participation today that you can apply towards your professional development hours and we will also provide in our summary that we send to you a follow-up link so that if you would like to listen to or watch the presentation again or share this with your colleagues who are not able to join us today you will have access to those so we thank you again so much for calling if this is your first time to attend please do me the favor of reaching out to Amy, my, myself, Amy Chaconis at Ingevity.com, and let me know so that we can make sure that you are on future invitations for these Connecting the, the DOTs webinars. We thank you again and wish you a great rest of the day and a really happy holidays. Thanks so much for attending today. Thank you all.